Gantz is just an uncaring, unforgiving, relentless manga. So I finished what would be volume 16 as I caught up with the omnibuses and I just could not live with that cliffhanger that I had to search for it online and read the next volume. So I suppose the rest of these reviews will be volume by volume. Um, oh man, so much to talk about here. First of all, Izumi needs to die. This character, he needed to die pretty much from his introduction, from all the horrible things that he's done. And actually, I'm a little uh, confused as to why Kay or somebody else doesn't try to take him out outside of the game of Gantz. I, I don't think there was any, ever a rule established that Gantz members couldn't kill each other. Um, especially outside of the game of Gantz while it's not going on, so I don't know if that's a thing. But Izumi apparently is still going around living a normal life, and this motherfucker has to die. He has just... First of all, there was the whole mass shooting incident that happened, so that is cause enough. But now we have uh, this new game of Gantz, and we don't know why Gantz chose to have uh, Tai be the target of this game. Now, normally it's, of course, some random alien creature, but this time it was a human and it was Ty. And there was a couple of reasons why we may think that it was Ty. Um, one reason could be just the fact that Gantz is trying to make things harder and harder for Kay Corono, our main character, because he has been surviving, he is building up his points, he has been through so much, and he's the longest surviving member, so perhaps Gantz is just upping the difficulty, as it were, as it goes along. We don't really know. Um, but he does kind of go out of his way to try to protect Ty, and of course him and Ty have been together for so long, a relationship that started on just a dare, just as a joke, and then he slowly started to grow these feelings and attachments for him, and then they abruptly kind of just broke up, and as soon as they broke up, Gantz pulls this trick, which again kind of leads to the idea that maybe Gantz itself is trying to mess with Corono, is trying to make his life, or the game for him, even more difficult than it was. Uh, because of course he can't gain any points this round, because he's not going to kill Tai, and of this, this of course causes conflict in the group with half of the group wanting to go after Tai to kill her, and then half of the group being on Corona's side, being like, no, Corona knows her, he loves her, like, we can't let this happen, and then all hell tends to break loose as it does in Gantz, and so that could be one of the reasons why it chose Tai. Uh, one of the other reasons that was suspected by Rika, actually, she is the actress model character uh, that has come into the game of Gantz, that has seen Corona in his habitat, doing the thing that he does, seeing him as a leader, seeing him a lot differently than most people would see him, see, uh, than most people in his actual everyday life would see him, or in the original couple, first, uh, you know, three or four game of Gantz, would see him as uh, Rika, right from the get-go, has seen Corono as this kind of hero leader type, which is something that he has very slowly um, fallen into the role of, something that he, of course, didn't even want to begin with, something that is completely out of line with who he was as a character, but because of these circumstances and because of the continued experience, he has grown to be that. Um, and of course, last volume, he was channeling what he thought Kato would do, which I thought was really cool that he would kind of do that, as in, like, I don't really know what to do as a leader, but Kato was a natural leader, and, you know, he was my friend, and we went through so much, so I'm kind of, like, channeling what I felt he did. Um, so I really, really like that concept. Well, Rika um, had a little conversation with Ty as they're trying to get her fr away from the people that are trying to kill her, trying to get her to escape, and Ty was there taking photos during the last Gantz game. And she was thinking that uh, on the photos, perhaps Ty got a glimpse of somebody from Gantz, and then Gantz didn't want that getting out, or something like that. Something along those lines, I think, was the gist of what they were saying. So, Rika goes to Ty's apartment, finds the film, crushes it, it uses her Gantz suit to like enhance the strength, crushes it, and hopes that that will be the end of it. But, unfortunately, it's not, and the game continues on. Uh, we also have moments where the two psychics, uh, I wrote down the characters' names because sometimes I have a hard time remembering, uh, but Hiroto and Kenzo are the two psychics. psychics. Um, Kenzo's the kind of um, the older like master of the psychic ability that taught it to Hiroto. And they're trying to stop Alumi with their psychic abilities, which you think would be perfect, right? But I guess the psychic abilities, um, though powerful, do require concentration and require some time. Even if time is just a couple of seconds, if it's like 10 seconds, that's still 10 seconds when you're in a fight, when you're in a battle, is a really long time. And it's too long of a time for Izumi to just stand there and take it. And of course, he swings his sword and slices Kenzo. 
and then kind of goes off after Tai. So the psychics are not able to slow him down, and then he gets out of distance. We also have Suzuki, the old man character, who I thought was going to bite it right here, because he's getting chased down also by some of the characters that want to win the game properly, and they blow off his legs, and we know that using, losing limbs or getting cut or something like that in Gantz isn't necessarily a death sentence because if you last long enough for the time limit to run out, you can get transported back to the room, bam, you're healed, you're fine. Uh, so when something like this happens, though it's extreme and you don't want to see that happen to the character, you at least have the idea in the back of your mind that, okay, there's still a chance for them to get out of this and still be alive, which fortunately was the case for Suzuki, um, but it was still really... Uh, heartening to see that happen to him because he hasn't really had that kind of damage happen to him yet. He hasn't really experienced the full like losing a limb kind of sensation that could happen during Gantz. Um, and Kurono does his absolute best to try to protect Tai. Uh, he does everything he can. Tai leaves with Rika, um, and and like I said, Rika goes to the apartment. And when Tai comes back, Tai comes running to Kurono and fucking Izumi. Um, manages to to inflict a mortal wound on her and she dies in Corona's arms and she's uh, transported um, which I thought was kind of because the way she was cut she was cut through the back so conceivably there could be a way to survive that you know depending on how deep the wound was and how much she was bleeding and you know when the time limit run out but she was transported away so and that's what happens to the alien characters, and since she was considered a target, I guess that's the same thing that happens. So, uh, we can assume that Tai did die, and Corona, of course, has an absolute breakdown at this. You know, he's, he's, he could be killed right here, you know, because he's so vulnerable. He just falls to his knees, he grabs her, he hugs her, and as she teleports away, and then we have that, like, horrible, misleading dream sequence, which, um, you know, he wakes up in bed with Tai, and, and thanks her and says that he loves her and everything and then he actually wakes up for real in the Gantz room uh, which was horrifying and I thought right then and there that Corona would just attack Azumi just in the room I thought that they would have their confrontation um, right then and there but apparently um, that's not the case so I guess I guess Corona was just so distraught you know he's just so in that state of like um, you know crying and emotion and, and panic or whatever so he's just having that moment so I guess that was kind of taking over but still none of the other characters attacked Izumi like uh, the psychic characters like didn't attack him right then and there or somebody else like I, I mean I get that Izumi is strong but they all have the suits like they all have the weapons like we could hopefully overpower this guy but that's not what happens I guess that's not the uh, the intention of where the manga was going and I'm sure Izumi will have some sort of epic death coming up, at least I really hope. But other than that, uh, that's that's what we get of that Gantz scenario. And then we get transported back to the real world. Um, oh, actually, no, there is one more thing. So um, here's where I think it's officially given to us, the audience, which I knew this information, I think, from watching the anime movies or the, the series. Um, but Kay asks what happens when you get 100 points. And Gantz officially shows two options at first, where it says, if you get 100 points, number one, you are free to go with your memory erased. So you can leave the game of Gantz, you don't have to do it again, but everything that happened with the game of Gantz, that's all erased from your memory, which some would say is a blessing. Uh, two is you will be given an extremely powerful weapon. And I'm assuming it will be extremely powerful if 100 points is so hard to gain and if the other option of 100 points is being free from the game that's a pretty big deal so i imagine the 100 points for a weapon would be a pretty big like destructive powerful weapon to get but then there's a third option that's kind of hazed out and corona has it come up and it is to revive a human from the memory and then corona asks you know who's in the memory and then we see all of the deceased characters that we've gone through so far including uh tai who is on there but also kato and uh kishimoto who of course died during the Buddha, uh, the the epic, you know, um, Buddha statue alien segment. You know, one of the biggest moments of the entire series. So, uh, Corona decides that he will get 100 points and he will revive all of them. He's going to revive all of his friends um, by getting 100 points over and over and over again. And just thinking about like the the amount of like emotional weight that that would put on you like getting 100 points in Gantz is extremely difficult because sometimes you can go through a whole game of Gantz you can lose a limb you can kill an alien or two and you can come out with like 12 points or seven points like it's the the idea of him getting 100 points over and over and over again is such a daunting task but he's determined now he's reached that point you know 
Um, and then we have Azumi also, who I, I don't know what he he would obviously go for the weapon once he gets 100 points, and he's probably pretty close also because he got the 30 from this um, Gantz scenario game. So there's him also. So we need to do something about him. Other than that, this volume also showed uh, the psychic character. Sorry, I'm going to look again until I memorize these names. Hiroto who, uh, after this whole experience, you know, it, it, with Gantz and everything that he's done with his psychic ability, he's kind of having a little bit of uh, regrets of killing human beings um, because he did kind of kill, he did kill his bully when he first got the psychic power and he kind of wants to do something good with his psychic power. And his girlfriend and him kind of come up with the idea to track down this serial killer and make him pay his dues and they do and that's awesome and it's such a neat little like side thing like besides everything that's going on with Gantz in the room of Gantz and you know hunting down the aliens we have these weird little like side things that are happening in the universe too like we have the characters that can access psychic abilities and we have like the vampire characters that are out there somewhere so there's all these little weird things that are going on in this world and it, it works for the world building and it works for uh, just giving us a little bit of an edge against whatever Gantz kind of throws at us. Now the final thing to talk about in this volume was there was a little boy character introduced and I can't remember his name. I didn't write his down, unfortunately. That was my bad. But he is uh, a little boy that's being abused by, I'm assuming, his parents. And um, his father kicks him really, really hard in the stomach or, you know, his mom's boyfriend, whoever it is, to the point where the child, you know, tragically dies. And we know right away from introducing this character that this kid's gonna wind up in Gantz. And also, we've seen in Gantz before, Gantz doesn't care if you're a kid. You'll still get killed. Um, so Gantz, so the boy shows up in the Gantz room, and he has this immediate uh, attention drawn to Dizemon, the big, like, kind of, like, muscly guy that was going around, like, challenging everybody and now has wound up in Gantz. Um, the strongest guy, the guy that was able to take out the dinosaur aliens without wearing a suit. Like, he's that strong. Um, and the little boy looks at him and thinks that he's uh, this character that's drawn called Muscle Rider, which I thought was adorable. And he sees this big muscly guy and he sees them and he's like, Muscle Rider, you know, that's you. And, the, and he's like, no, like, get away. And then as they start getting transported out, the kid doesn't have his suit on and they're trying to get him to put his suit on and he won't do it. Um, and then Dizemon comes over and he's like, look, I'm wearing the suit. You should wear the suit too. And the kid wants to. And it's just like, that's such a cute little, with, besides all like the destructive carnage and blood and gore and horrible things that are happening in Gantz, that little cute moment, I, I felt it. I felt it. Well, I felt a lot of things as well. I felt Ty's death too. But, um, so, but then the kid, of course, starts getting transported out into the world without a suit. And uh, I'm sure that they will try to get it to him as quick as they can. But we'll see what happens with that. A new game of Gantz is starting. I really hope Azumi gets freaking killed or something happens. I hope Corona confronts him during this game. I don't really know what's going to happen from here on out. Um, but if Corona is determined to get 100 points over and over to bring everybody back, that gives him a solid grounding and foundation to move forward. He is working more as a leader. He definitely has people on his side. He has Rika on his side. He has the old man on his side. Um, a couple of other people. Um, that definitely view him as uh, that leader hero character, which is so crazy considering where Corona started from, just this like arrogant teenage boy from, to this. But anyways, guys, so that's my review of volume 16 of Gantz. Tell me what you thought, leave your comments down below. I will be reading more Gantz very, very soon. Other than that, please like the video, comment, subscribe if you wanna stick around, see more reviews and whatnot. Other than that, guys, hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you next time.